Welcome everyone to my last ever FIFA 22 video. And while you know it is sad that you know FIFA 22 is over, at least we do have FIFA 23 to look forward to. But at the same time, still want to look back at all the success and fun that I had while making all these FIFA 22 series. And I decided what better way to end it than with my best 11 of FIFA 22. You now, obviously, you know there's always team of the season for all the respective leagues and just players overall so i figured so it gave me the idea to do this and something i'm probably going to do heading in into the future but just really wanted to do this and we're we'll starting off with the goalkeeper and the defense boyce clark bought him for just under a million dollars in my first ever fifa 22 series the barrel road to glory and pretty much was chasing a replica of him the entire journey along the way there he had, I think, 81 potential, but with dynamic potential, he ended up being, I believe, an 89 overall. So, really got me into the whole, okay, dynamic potential is something that actually really works in FIFA 22. And it was just a rock. I mean, it was just so nice for that, for, you know, that first series to not even have to think about having to replace goalkeeper. Could just go out there and do what we needed to do. At left back is Meyer from the Borussia Dortmund 2, Road to Glory. From the Youth Academy upward, he I had defense, defensive back uh, development play on him. Excellent defender from day one. He was also decently quick. Ne didn't really go forward all that much, but did, never really needed him to. Because absolute lockdown defender could always count on him. A little bit... I think the only reason I didn't switch him to center back is I believe he was 5'6". So a little undersized for me to truly want to switch him to that center back position, but overall, excellent defender. And this is, and Klosterman is the first of, I believe, two players where overall was never the highest, but it was more the impact and legacy that I felt from them heading forward. So I signed Klosterman in my Cambridge United 3.0 Road to Glory, where I had to use a back three. And if you guys have paid any attention to any of the videos I have made, I don't really use a back three all that often. I occasionally do it, but that's usually just because of how good the offense is and how much of a waste it would be to have for the back. But I can't really defend and never really have. So I always use a four back, occasionally a five back. So I had to sign him and he was only, I think he was an 84 overall. Like he never really impressed overall wise, but there was just something about him. He was just very quick, always was in the right position to make an interception or block a shot. Whatever it was, I could just always count on him. And the next center back, Stevens, for the Simon FC Create a Club Career Mode series from the Youth Academy upward. He started off as a defensive mid, but switched him to a center back very quickly because he's six foot four, six five, I believe. Proper Brexit center back would go in there, crunch, crunching tackles, clear the ball away with ease. Sometimes we'd go up in the offense, you know, just kind of go for a little run, but mainly stayed back and just destroyed anybody in his path. And the right back is McAvoy, right back for my Stevenage, Road to Glory, but he also doubled as a defensive midfielder, pretty much the Irish Philip Lom. When we needed him in that defensive mid position, you put him right in there, he did his job, but really found his calling as a really attack-minded right back. Could not have asked for anything better from him, excellent job from him. And now moving on to the midfield, which was really tough, because I needed to so, obviously, I think it was the Champions or FIFA team this season where they played like a 3-3-4. So, I wanted to keep, you know, I wanted to keep this formation realistic. And so, I just didn't have, you know, eight, eight strikers and wingers and two center backs and one outside back. So, it was really tough in the midfield because I haven't really ever used a holding midfielder. So, trying to figure out which of these three is the most true center midfielder. I ended up with Lou Ku. Center mid for the Real Sociedad B Road to Glory. He joined the club as like a 62 overall from the Youth Academy. Preloaded in player. And I took quite the gamble. I took quite the risk playing him early on. The team was lower 60 or higher 60s, lower 70s at the time. Was kind of making a little bit of a push for a promotion, but it really wasn't the biggest concern. But I played him because I thought there was something special about him. High, high work rate naturally. He's very quick. Never really lost the ball, would always make a, the good pass, but at the same time, could you could go up there in the box, he could finish. He could play as a 10, he could play as a 6, he could play as an 8. Really just a stud for the team. And 
the left center mid, Reynoso, is another one of those players, like Klosterman, the two where overall wise was never the highest, but was so important. Because he was in my Minnesota United career mode series, which is pretty much shaped what I'm going to be doing in the future. I'll, I'll get to that later in the video, but in the MLS, obviously you, you don't always have the greatest of players, the best of players. And there was so much turnover with release clauses and players just want to go to head over into Europe. And I only played for one, I played one season, I played every single game, and Reynoso was the consistent player. I believe he led the league in goals and assists. He was all over everywhere, whether that be playing as an attacking mid, playing as a center mid. I think I even put him out wide for a game or two, played him as a false nine a couple of times. Wherever I put him, he just continued to impress me and really make me proud of him. But I don't know if there's any player that I am more proud of than Tierno Balo believe got him from RB Salzburg, but I think that's where he is now in real life. I think he was from a different Austrian club when I first bought him, but bought him for, well, I think I was also an under a million, potential like 76, 77. He started out uh, wide on the right mid position, moved him to attacking mid. He was the center forward at one point. He was the center mid at one point, back to the attacking mid. Ended up being 93, 94 overall, best player in the world absolute stud very very quick and very very good on the dribble passing was always there but it was wasn't a strong suit same what goes for defending and shooting just was very good at just getting into the right opportunities and then i mean what, i mean if you're in a good enough position you should just be able to make a decent pass and decent shot but really him along with boyce clark really opened me up to the idea of dynamic potential really working in fifa 22 and you know actually encouraged me to buy some lower rated players and this front three is so good so we'll start on the left with Karamoko Dembele but he also could have played on the right he really just kind of played everywhere for me in the Simon FC Creative Club crew mode series I mean it's Karamoko Dembele he pretty much carried the team from the very beginning I think like the first five seasons he was by far our stud player then he had two two-ish off seasons then a good season then just kind of a normal season because those first couple of seasons with how quick he was and I was just lobbing balls in behind for him then once we got to the Premier League things you know kind of catch up players a lot be better faster stronger so then I moved him from the right where he was just you know our iron robin type thing cutting in behind scoring goals like Mo Salah moved him to the left mid position and a little bit in the midfield to kind of use his playmaking abilities then it ended up eventually using a 4-4-2 for our last kind of full season. And he was on that left providing goals, whether that be through actually shooting them and scoring them or assisting them. And right wing is Deprez. Borussia Dortmund to Road to Glory. This dude, he was a center forward, but he started off as right mid. So I decided, you know what, it's just easier to do a 4-3-3 and figuring out who to put on this team. So I'll put him there. He really uh, surprised me many, many, many times. I mean, he joined as a Belgian. You know, he's just another one of those tall, good dribblers you get from the youth academy that you know you have no clue how any of them are actually going to play in game. But whatever it was, his shooting was never really all that high. But he scored the most magnificent of goals. He was constantly scoring goals left, right, center. He was our center forward. He was our main offensive motor for many many seasons and he helped carry us to champions league glory and look, might be a little bit of recency bias but i have decided to go for stewart from the steve nidge road glory up top just because of the journey that he took joining the team from the youth academy he went on alone for a little bit started as a was a winger at one point then he moved on to that striker position then he was a secondary striker he played as a center forward he really just kind of did it all because he was, I think he ended up with 99 pace, and obviously that is huge in really just the effectiveness of the player, but also excellent dribbler, and he could score from almost any angle. And he he did nothing for us. I think it was the first three seasons where I didn't even think about him, but that fourth season, I believe it was, really took over and really helped carry us to glory. So yeah, this is the team... Best 11 of FIFA 22, and kind of just say what a team it is. I mean, it's also a pretty interesting team. I mean, we have a very good mixture of bot players as well as Youth Academy players, because that was one thing I was really concerned about when I'm making this, because you guys know I love to use the Youth Academy. 
I got really, really scared that it was only going to be a Youth Academy Best 11. And then I was thinking, ooh, what if I do a Youth Academy Best 11 and a normal Best 11? But I just decided it was just going to be easier just to do an all-around, broad-scope Best 11. And this is the team that I went with, and I'm going to watch back this video probably at the end of FIFA 23 and probably compare the teams. You know, that'll, that'll open up a whole other can of worms. So don't expect this to be the last time that you see this team. But yeah, now I wanted to get into FIFA 23. Obviously, I don't know when you're seeing this, but FIFA 23 doesn't come out at the time of recording this for a month and a half. So I don't know. I kind of know what I'm going to do. And like I said, with the Minnesota United career mode, I think I'm going to end up doing monthly career mode episodes. Obviously, certain months are going to be different. So, you know, you know, June and July will probably get linked together. August should end up being a month on its own, but, you know, depending on where I go, things might just be a little bit different, but, and I also plan to play two games in an episode, so they should be about eight minutes long in length, that's kind of what I'm thinking, you know, eight to ten, something, might be a little bit shorter, you know, who knows if I'm going to be scoring, the games can be seven to five in FIFA 23, we, no one has a clue, there could be a lot of 2-1 games, no one knows, but that's how I think I'm going to end up doing it that way, I can also get more videos out more frequently, and plan is kind of in December and January, maybe even February, along with my all my Madden content, maybe put out like two, three videos a day across all, you know, main channel, FIFA channel, the JTB3 channel, but as well as, I think that would be enough time, I'll be playing enough games to also collect enough clips, and the biggest thing that I have always felt weird with Road to Glories and Career Modes is Road to Glories be pure objective is just to get to the end, win the Champions League for me. But then that does leave some issues because all these Youth Academy players that I'm promoting pretty much after the fourth season, I'm never going to see again, never going to use again, and could care less about. And obviously that's pretty boring. So I wanted to do the monthly crew mode where, you know, I get a chance to, I mean, it's, you know, it's middle of March. We're in the Premier League. I just promoted, you know, a five foot four striker from Bolivia who's got five-star weak foot and excellent pace. You know what, let's put him in a game, let's see what he can do. So, I, you know, just kind of want to get, and also get would get more attached to more players than just probably four or five. Like when I was going through trying to make the best 11s, I couldn't even rem remember, like Meyer, I could not remember his name to save my life. Klosterman, I really struggled to find out, oh, who's that next center back that I need. Right back was easy, center back easy, goalkeeper easy. And then the front line, there's probably players who played better, but I just don't remember them, don't remember the names. So, that is pretty much what I think I'm going to be doing for FIFA 23. Going to be a lot of content coming out, probably a week after the game's out, so I have a chance to edit, record, and then upload it. So, it might take me a week or two to kind of get th two things, because I'll also be in college at the time. So, But, I will be making FIFA 23 videos. Can't wait to see you guys then. And also, check out all my different FIFA channels. I got... You know, main channel, I have my Clips channel, and I have JTB FIFA, I have JTB 3, and JTB FIFA Clips. So, doing a lot, hoping to really take a big step forward in with Madden 23 and FIFA 23. Hopefully you guys will support me. I hope to see you guys for the first video of FIFA 23. And it is JTB, signing off.